In this video, we're going to be covering Chapter 12, Section 3, which deals with concentration of solutions. And just to get it out of the way, first of all, we're going to be doing some vocab, uh, beginning with the word concentration right here. Now, concentration is just a measure of the amount of solute uh, per amount of solvent. And there are two very general ways to describe uh, concentration. Normally, we say a solution is either dilute, and that's where there is a small amount of solute in the solution, or we say it's very concentrated. And oppositely, a concentrated solution is where there is a lot of solute per solvent. Now while these are technical terms, they're not very specific or quantitative. For example, a solution can be very dilute if it has, uh, if it's very unsaturated rather, or it can be very dilute simply because the solute and solvent don't mix very well. So uh, there's a little amount of solute you can actually fit within the solvent. It all depends, it's all really a relative description. There's no really quantitative information that accompanies these terms. Now the first way of describing concentration that we're going to be discussing is something called molarity and that is simply a measure of the number of moles of solute per liter of solution. So for example if you wanted to make one molar uh, sodium uh, sodium hydroxide solution that is one mole per liter of solution, first you would have to measure out one mole of sodium hydroxide. And we already know how to do this using the molar mass. So for one mole of sodium hydroxide, which weighs 40 grams for each mole, you would have to measure out 40 grams of sodium hydroxide to make a one molar solution. Note, however, that you don't just take this 40 grams of sodium hydroxide and add it to one liter of water because that could possibly be greater than one liter of total solution. What you would do instead is take the 40 grams of sodium hydroxide and add it to something that is less than one liter, say 500 milliliters, and then you would add in the other, say, 500 milliliters to bring the total solution to exactly one liter with one mole in it. Now we're going to do a sample problem. Let's say you were given 90 grams of salt to mix with 3.5 liters of water, and you had to know what is the molarity of this solution that you're going to make. So you'd start off by calculating how many moles of salt you actually have. So for 90 grams of salt, then you have to use the molar mass, which we know is 58.44 grams of salt for each single mole of salt. Once again, you cancel the units and you end up with 1.54 moles of salt. Now, you'll remember that molarity is simply moles per unit volume. So you plug in the molar amount and the volume that you have. In this case, you would take 1.54 moles for every 3.5 liters and you would end up with a 0.44 molar solution of salt. Oppositely, you could start with a solution of a known molarity, let's say a 0.5 molar solution of hydrochloric acid, and let's say you had 0.8 liters of it. You could then use this knowledge to figure out the total number of moles of hydrochloric acid that you have within this solution. All you have to do is use dimensional analysis to figure out how to set up the problem correctly. By the very definition of molarity, you know that you have 0.5 moles of HCl for every liter of water. 
and then you just multiply by how many liters you have and you'll notice that they cancel out. In this case we have 0.8 liters. The liters cancel out and you end up with 0.44 moles of hydrochloric acid. Now the second method we're going to be discussing for describing the concentration of a solution is what is known as its molality. And molality is very similar to molarity with one key difference. It is instead of moles per unit volume, molality is the number of moles per kilogram of solvent. So for example if we were to take one mole of sodium hydroxide which is equal to 40 grams of sodium hydroxide we could take that mole and dissolve it in one kilogram of water to get what is known as a one mole solution of sodium hydroxide and you'll notice I use a lowercase m instead of the uppercase m that we used for molarity and I have that clarified just up here. Now a mole solution is a bit simpler to prepare than say a molar solution because for a molar solution all you have to do is take the proper amount of solute you want and add however many kilograms of solvent, which is simplified even further by the fact that one kilogram of water is equal to one liter of water. All you have to do is simply add one to the other rather than for a molar solution where you are forced to fill it up, you know, halfway, three quarters, and then add the rest in a separate step. Now I'm just going to do one quick example of calculating the molality of a solution because we use molar solutions in this class much more often than molar solutions. So we'll start off by dissolving 17.1 grams of common table sugar into 0.125 kilograms of water. And if you'll remember molality is simply the number of moles of solute per kilogram of solvent. So we already have the kilograms of solvent, we don't have to do any extra calculations to get the denominator. However we have the weight or the mass of sugar we're going to be using in grams rather than having a number of moles. So what we have to do is convert the grams of sugar to moles using its molar mass. Now once you add up all the carbons and hydrogens and oxygens that are within this uh, sucrose molecule you get a molar mass of 342.34 grams for each mole. Now you cancel the units and you end up with 0.05 moles of sugar. And then it's just a simple division problem from there. You take the 0.05 moles of sugar over the 0.125 kilograms of water and you end up with a 0.4 mole solution of sugar in water.